consider this briefly. Let's say that I killed a man, and we're going to call him Mark. I killed Mark, and another person hates Mark. It was discovered that I killed Mark, and that person hates Mark. Or was just angry with Mark, perhaps. We both have a consequence, and our sentence is death. Well, that doesn't necessarily make much sense to us. That is what scripture tells us. In Matthew 5, 21-22, it says, Thou shalt not kill, and whoever will kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, whoever is angry with his brother will be in danger of the judgment. So if I kill someone, I'm in danger of the judgment. If I'm angry or hate someone, I'm in danger of the judgment. And I'm taking danger of the judgment to mean death or in other words, spiritual death. So I would say with this in mind that I, I would say that all sin has the same outcome, the same penalty. All sin ends in death. While that may be true, I would not agree that all sin is equal in evilness. They are all some level of evil or lesser greater sins. So I'm saying that there is an ultimate punishment, it's the same punishment for every sin, but there's also varying degrees of sin. And how can I claim such a bold statement, perhaps? It's not too difficult to claim because scripture does support that idea, that theology. So you hear a lot of times that people might use quote scripture saying that if I hate my brother, I have murdered them. If I lust after my neighbor's wife, I've already committed adultery. While this does have truth to it, it's not quite what it's saying. Honestly, with this, when Jesus was using that scripture in Matthew, it was to tell the Pharisees that it doesn't matter what kind of sin you do, whether it be anger or killing, it's all going to be death and you need salvation. That was his whole entire purpose of using that scripture. That was the context of it. But people like to pull out of context and use it to defend something or to perhaps reinforce something. So let's say with this idea, let's say that anger and murder are equal. Lust and adultery are equal. In this case here, if I want to reinforce it, I would say, I shouldn't be angry because it's the same as murdering. I shouldn't think about stealing something because it's the same as actually stealing it. Well, it's not necessarily the actual same thing. In this ideology, it is. No matter which I do, it's still punishable by death. But then, you could also use it in an opposite way. Why shouldn't I kill that person? Why shouldn't I steal that? Why shouldn't I commit adultery? It's the same as not doing it. Because I've already thought about it, I've already been angry about it, I've already been envious about it, so what should stop me from actually doing it if they're both equal in punishment? That is some bad theology, but that is how it can be used and has been used. So some more facts to support that all sin, no matter what it is, punishable by death. We have James 2, 10 through 11 that says, for whoever keeps the whole law that fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So again, it doesn't matter if I did one law, let's say, I disrespected my parents. I have just broken all the laws of don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't be envious, don't dishonor God. I've just broken all of those. So again, this could be used to reinforce the idea, then don't do any of that. Or it could be, I've already broken it, so why don't I go for the, the greatest one? Because I'm already being condemned to death. Some bad theology, I would say. But scripture doesn't, always, doesn't only just give the idea that all sin is punishable by death, no matter what the sin is. It also says there are varying degrees of sin. If we look at Moses and the golden calf, when he sees it, he says that the people have sinned greatly. So this is not just a sin that affects one person, it affects the whole community. Then we have Jesus 
talking about the Pharisees misleading the people about the Sabbath. And he calls them vipers. He is very harsh on them. But then we look at the one at the well, who is apparently an adulteress of some sort, or perhaps could be called a prostitute or something like that, because she is told to have had five husbands. He's not as harsh with her as he is with the Pharisees. Which is, gives me the impression, again, that there are lesser and greater sins. And let's work on with this idea about lesser and greater sins. I want to use the word abhorrent or seriousness as well as like greater and lesser sins. I would say that murdering is absolutely abhorrent. It is a very great sin. While I would say that anger is a sin, I would not say it is as bad as murdering somebody. While I would say that lusting is a great sin, I would not say it's as bad as rape or perhaps adultery. If I envy a life, if I envy my friend's life, and, and it puts like a wedge between us, that's just envy. But if that envy becomes greater than that of wanting to kill them, wanting to take away what they have, I would say that envy is the lesser of the sins. But again, we are warned by this all sin is punished by death, that even if I envy them, I've already done the same thing as if I had taken everything from them or perhaps made it where they could not have it. But I would say that if we don't even think about that, if I'm just envying and I don't kill them because I envy them, again, the killing is still the greater sin. Again, like Jesus said to Pilate, that the person who turned him over to Pilate had the greater sin. Therefore, I would assume that Pilate has the lesser sin of actually having to give the punishment to him. And again, like in other scripture parts, usually in the... Uh, the end books or even in the prophecy books there would also be the prophet books sorry there's also discussion about there being greater abominations we have the abominations now but there are greater abominations <clears throat> again like while all sin has the same end there does seem to be some kind of implication that there are lesser and greater sins and how can we determine what this is? I would say one idea of what could be considered a greater sin is how many does it impact? What is the scape of the consequences? Or another one is, let's go back to this murdering or even dishonoring. If I have dishonored someone in the image, who's made in the image of God, or if I've killed someone who's in the image of God, I have just dishonored God himself, because he created that person in the image of God. Therefore, you could say, whatever has the greater consequence, or perhaps, whatever hurts God's image. I won't say there's any particular end points to lesser or greater. It's a very varying scape there. Another idea here, not just because if it dishonors God, or if it affects a great majority of people, there's the aspect of the believer. I would say that if a believer decides that they want, a claimed believer decides they would like to get drunk, it is a more serious offense than just a non-believer doing the same thing. If a believer steals, I would say it's a greater sin than the one who doesn't believe because the believer knows that it's a sin but they're still doing it. So while the sin is equal in a way, it is unequal in the intentions. An unbeliever may not realize that what they're doing is a sin. Well, the believer knows it, but they still do it. That is just what I think, but I still agree that there are lesser and greater sins. So is all sin equal in the punishment received? Yes, as we've already determined, the punishment is death. Is all sin equal and evil, seriousness, ab abhorrence? I would say no. So all sin again is punished by spiritual death, but 
different sins have a greater impact on the world, on the people, on God's witness, on our witness as believers in Him. And we should also keep in mind that with this idea of lesser and greater, that still means that we should use this one law broken equals all broken as a way to tell people not that they should not necessarily use it as an excuse. They should use it as a way to reinforce what they do. They should not break the laws because it's equal to death. While those who want to misuse it will misuse it in the manner of why not just do it because I've already broken it already in some way. I did not kill anyone, so I am good. I have not stolen anything, so I am good. I have thought about hurting someone, I am not good. I have wanted something from someone that I could not have. I am not good. So we will say, people also like to use this as a way to compare. Yes, there are less and greater sins, but all sins have the same punishment, therefore we should not compare sins. We should do our best to avoid all sin. All sin is evil. Rape, murdering, stealing, drunkenness, homosexuality, drinking, to abhorrence, everything, all sin is evil. <clears throat> and if it's done on purpose, if a believer does these sins on purpose, or if an unbeliever who knows it's wrong does it on purpose, it is even greater of a sin than if it was not done on purpose. And this is how we should interpret scripture. There is one punishment. We are not good. This is why we need God. We should not compare ourselves to others because all laws are, all, pun all broken laws have the same punishment. But again, there are different consequences to those sins.